Welcome to LA Insight Studios, where we bring insight from LA. My name is Debbie Sheridan, and I will be your host today. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, we are unable to host our live uh, and in-person workshops, seminars, Q&As, acting intensives, and so forth. So we have decided to put together some insight for you right here on YouTube on this platform and hope that you'll be able to take, uh, take away something from it while we are safer at home. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to our website, hit the little bell so you'll get an alert every time we put up a new video. We're going to be seeing so many amazing people. We're talking to actors and photographers, casting directors, agents, managers, so many more, and some how-to videos and stuff like that. So uh, you're not going to want to miss any of it. Go ahead and like us now. Why not? What have you got to lose, really? Uh, okay, that's it, you guys. Let's get started. I am so excited for our guest today. He hails from Brisbane, Australia, as a graduate of the National Institute of Dramatic Arts. And though he got his start in Australia on hit shows like McLeod's Daughters, Last Man Standing, and Always Greener, in the role of Pete the Love Professor Jones, which we're going to circle back to later so I can find out more about that for sure. Uh, most of you will know him from his series regular roles on The Glades as Jim Longworth and on Satisfaction as Neil Truman and, of course, as Logan Nelson in the hugely successful and wildly popular feature film Jigsaw. He's worked in comedy, drama, horror, and even children's programming. He has done it all, and he is here today to give us a little insight on his path to success. Welcome, Matt Passmore. <laughs> Thank you very much, good to be here. So, the love professor. What? <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us about that a little bit. <laughs> well, I mean, niche, hello. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, what, casting just, I walked in and they just went, yes. <laughs> um, Makes that perfect was, sense. That, that was actually my first uh, camera role. I'd only done theater up until then. So it was like the a sort of a light comedy series in Australia and, uh, and my character, um, you know, sort of as a, as a double life was a DJ. And he was on one of those, um, uh, he was on one of those uh, program, radio programming when, um, uh, I, I don't know if it is in this country, but certainly there's a couple of stations in Australia where people can call up and they, you know, they want a love song for their beloved, but it ends up being some pretty crazy people. And this is in real life. They'll be like, yeah, hey, this is for, uh, this is for Shanice. Uh, you know, I want some Phil Collins. <laughs> hey, I'm going to be out soon, baby. This is my love coming to you from Cell Block D, Boggle <laughs> Road. Going to be out in six, baby. No. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, and, and it was based on this actual DJ and he'd be like, oh, so we're uh, here on a Saturday night. And if you've got a special person in your life, well, then give us a call. That's what we can do. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. I love it. That yes. is hilarious. I actually tried Googled it because I thought I, I was trying to see if I could find an episode to watch. And I... I didn't know where to find it. I, I couldn't. I couldn't find anything for it. <laughs> but I was. And I don't have any copies, so don't look to me. No. I'm really hoping to find that. Um, so you graduated from the National Institute of Dramatic Arts. Yeah, the National Institute in Australia. It's a three-year Bachelor of Arts, uh, majoring in Dramatic Art, um, as part of the University of New South Wales. Uh, it's it's the sort of like the premier school in Australia that's based on RADA in England, uh, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. They sort of base their curriculum on that. It's classical training. Um, I was one of two people in our year that led uh, kind of an uprising, but uh, myself and two others kind of like, we want more camera work. You know, this is, uh, uh, classical training is brilliant. And I, it threw me into things that I never would have done uh, normally, as in voice, uh, movement, body, all that sort of stuff, dance, right. music. But um, I thought it was very much lacking in camera work. So we, in my third year there, we started to get um, a lot more camera work. Um, I think growing up in Australia um, and with the industry there, to make a living as an actor, you got to do it all. You know, there's no such thing. In fact, I don't think that even exists in today's age. You're like, oh, I'm just a theater actor, or I'm just a television, or I'm just film, or oh, I just work with puppets. 
um, <laughs> you know, or I just do voiceover. No, you know, the, I think the majority of actors uh, need a wide range of a, a strong skill set in all sorts of things. And normally you get those skills, one, by training, but also two, by being thrown in the deep end. Right. Yeah. We didn't get right. we didn't get taught how to do voiceover work. I just got my first voiceover job. That sort of thing. Trial by fire. Yeah. Uh, um, so you knew then that you wanted to, obviously you went to school to a higher learning um, for acting. So this is something that you had a passion for early on as a child? I did, but I grew up a long way from Hollywood or okay. even, you know, or even the United States where um, the acting profession is seen as a very viable uh, the way of life. Where I grew up in Australia, that was like, especially where I grew up in Brisbane, Australia, um, very coastal, working class neighborhood. Uh, to say that, oh, yeah, I, I want to grow up to be an actor is like saying, I want to grow up to be an astronaut. People go, oh, that's nice. Pat you on the head and pull your pants down in public just for being an idiot, uh, for dreaming too big. So, <laughs> right. you know, there was, there was an influx of actors like Russell Crowe and Guy Pearce and those guys as I grew up. Um, uh, the, your Mel Gibsons and, and um, Nicole Kidman's. So, but it's uh, as opposed to the United States where it's kind of in, in the psyche here um, of, oh, you can be an artist and make a living doing that. That was, it certainly is uh, not so much a stretch now, but when I was growing up, that's a huge stretch. Right. And I, I think if you, well, certainly around about the time that I got serious about it, people were kind of like, oh, that's, that's great. And that's a nice hobby. When are you going to get a real job? Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, especially uh, probably you didn't have, your parents didn't have the internet at that time to like research how no. could my son be an actor, right? So no, it really right. felt very distant and impossible, at, you know, especially without that kind of connection to Hollywood or any other kind of acting classes or information. That's right. And there were actors in Australia making a living, but they were down in Sydney and Melbourne and just, just a long way away from, you know, I didn't grow up in poverty, but we grew up working class. Yeah. Uh, the neighborhood that I grew up with is like, hey, get a trade behind you and then get a degree. Something always to fall back on. My parents never stood in my way, but I have been a source of worry for them, I mm -hmm. think my entire life. Even from the first play I did, they were kind of like, oh, that's great. Is it out of your system? <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to become a teacher now? Cause then we don't have to worry so much. Yeah. Um, you know that you know that working class chip that you always have, which is a fear of having nothing, fear of not being able to provide. So I'm I'm like the least likeliest candidate to ever choose this life. Okay. Because I grew up with that real hardworking dad, always working kind of thing, and and knowing where he was going to work and what he was going to do for the next fifteen years, I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow. You know, that's right, right. the blessing and the curse of the actor's life. I love yeah. it because I I would die in an office cubicle. Um, Same. And I, I've done a million jobs to to know that I can do those jobs, but I don't want to remain there. Where um, so the blessing of this job is tomorrow I could be in Prague. You know that's happened. Get the right. call and like, and they're shooting now. You need to be on a plane this afternoon, and you wake up in Prague. Um, and the con of this job, especially for a working class kid like me, is like uh, I'd love to be able to save for a holiday. Um, but I don't know what's going to happen next. So. Right. That's yeah. so true. Um, so then for you really going to, uh, have for higher learning, you know, National Institute of Dramatic Art, that really kind of was something that probably was necessary for you to get the training or the connections or whatever it, it, it was that you could, you could get from there in order to then pursue your career. Cause without that, what would you would you have been able to? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was really trying to run away from this life. Um, you know, I'd seen a Shakespeare on, in my first year of high school while all the other kids were saying, oh, that is the biggest piece of crap I've ever seen. I felt like, oh, I haven't lived till now. Um, so I knew that bug was in me, but it just seemed so far away. So I went to the army um, oh. and coming out of the army, I was working in factories, I was driving trucks. Um, and I started with community theater or in Brisbane, it was called Pro-Am, 
theater, pro mm -hmm. amateur, which meant there were some uh, professional actors scattered in with amateur actors. You didn't really get paid. You maybe got some petrol money. But that I kind of started on the stage that way. Uh, I was performing nights and welding in factories by day. Wow. Um, I got to a point in one of those amateur productions, it was a Midsummer Night's Dream, where one of the professional actors I was working with, his agent came and saw it and said, hey, get that kid to call me. Um, and I did, and I got work immediately in theater. So, and that year I did three professional gigs uh, in Brisbane, in, um, in Brisbane theaters. I hit a Dostoevsky play, realized I knew absolutely nothing. Um, and I was about to do a, a, a Much Ado About Nothing. And one of those actors, great Shakespearean actor um, called Andrew Buchanan, he took me under his wing and he said, look, there's a chance maybe that you'll get snapped up by one of these soaps, Home and Away, Neighbors, something like that. You'll do a couple of years. And, but if you, re you know you can make a living out of this. That was the first light that went on, almost like permission. Okay. So you can make a living being an actor and two, go and get trained. Go and get, you know, it's great that you've had some work. Um, and yes, you absolutely learn so much on the job. But he was like, go down to Sydney, go and, go and get classically trained in the best school. NIDA has, has the badge, the name. Um, and, and, and also learn what it is, you know, mm -hmm. what, what it is to be an actor, what it is to be an artist. It's as far away from red carpets and gossip magazines as you can possibly imagine. Um, it's a hard, inconsistent life. And, um, and, it, and it, was so, it was so a road that hadn't been trod anywhere in my family or my family's family. You know, yeah. no one, I was absolutely the black sheep. Um, but he was the one that said, go and, go and get trained. And I hated him for it in that moment because I was about to go and play you know, uh, I, was, I was about to go and play a great character in a, in a play, but he was absolutely right. And, uh, and I did, because otherwise, learning about the history of theater was important, or, or you know, different, as, to, as to how this whole thing came about, let alone working on my voice. You know, the first, first week I got to NIDA, and I was like this, hey, you know, and, yeah, and I, was, I, was, I was very <laughs> Brisbane, you know, like this, and the voice teacher went, oh, we're gonna work. Um, <laughs> yeah. And movement, I had no idea how to get my body back to neutral so that whatever, whatever my body was doing as a character would be a choice, not yeah. something I was a slave to. You know, how, how does this character move through the space? You know, does he lead with, the, you know, which part does he lead with? You know, how, there was so much, of, so much of that which all formed into acting, you know, not just acting lessons that for me, coming from Brisbane, Australia was mm -hmm. the best possible thing that I personally could have done. Right. And let me put in here that it's so important for, I think, uh, younger actors when they tell me, you know, what should I do or how do I do this? There's no one way, you know, every single actor that's ever been mm -hmm. has had their road. Now, right. some, some may intersect in different things they did. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I guess coming out of the army, which is an institution, I went, uh, I went into NIDA almost as a mercenary going, I'm going to get exactly the things I need, work hard. And, um, you know, I'm not here to party and experiment. You know, I'm, I'm here to, I already knew from the army that I learned the most by failing. And that's, that's something that acting school does. You're going to be cast in roles and do things that you would never normally do and quite often fall flat on your face. And that's right. when the learning curve goes, Ooh. you know. Um, and Amazing. so, I, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what high school training did for me. And then, of course, there is the launch into the industry, which often the acting schools, and I'm pretty sure they do that here as well, you will showcase at the end right. of your third year or fourth year. Mm -hmm. Agents, directors, casting agents come to your showcase out of that you hope to get representation and then you start on your career and then you really start learning or then some things that you're kind of like i don't know what the hell that's you know there'll be some techniques i learned at night of the alexander technique or you know we were we were getting the michael Chekhov technique thrown at us and another play the whole yak technique and from stanis you know from stanislavski down to strasbourg or you know sicily berry all that kind of stuff and then it's 
some time, somewhere in some job will be like, oh, oh, okay. You know, <laughs> right. that, that's, that's where the real understanding of that work, but having all that stuff thrown at you and forming a, forming a toolbox, yeah. I think is the best way that I've, that I've ever looked at acting and training and experience is to add to my toolbox mm -hmm. because somewhere down the track, it's going to be 4.30 in the morning. There's going to be a film crew around you that's barely had their coffee, yawning their butts off, and you're going to have the most important scene of the film. And they're going to say, Inevitably. speed and right. bring it. Right. And, and you're not going to feel it. You're not going to be in the mood. You need a toolbox so that you can access what you need to access. And, and everything about from your voice to your body to your acting techniques or and instinct becomes your tools and you are not slave and you hope not to be slave to, um, you know, all the things that might get in the road with that. Yeah. That is incredible advice. Um, for, you know, anybody watching, especially those who are just getting started in their careers or, you know, really just getting serious about becoming performers that it's, it's, it's not just, you know, trying to get an agent and, you know, get an audition. Like they really have to do their work. They need to be, even if they're not in Juilliard, you know, or Yale or going to a, some higher learning, which, you know, it sounds like would be a great thing if they're able to do that, you know, just listening to right. you, like with this classical training and everything that you can learn, even if you think at the time it's useless or how is this ever going to apply to real life? Um, you somehow eventually it weaves its way in and becomes something that's useful for you, you know, years down the road. So it's yeah. great advice um, to, to actors who are really serious about starting a career that to get into just acting classes, right? Just any, try out Meisner, try out uh, improv, you know, see, see where you, what you, what you can take from every sort of uh, technique or style or teacher. Because everyone yep. is 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 different, right? And and, and it's and stockpile. Th that's right. And and it's you know everyone says you have to be fearless. Now the way you are fearless is confronting your fear. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> you know you know they say true courage is not that you're not afraid. It's that you're freaking terrified, but you jump off the cliff. You know um, there's I truly believe that there is one thing that all successful actors have in common and that is that they work hard they work absolutely hard you got an audition tomorrow you got an audition in two days you're working on it not leaving it till oh, i'll see what happens or whatever no you work on it and and uh classes um all that kind of stuff is about building your toolbox because mm -hmm. some, some people will go well what do you mean work just learning my lines learning your lines is just you know right that's that's just a given get right. get your lines down if you can um but starting by reading the thing, if they've sent it to you, reading, knowing what story you're in, finding what's the overall objective, scene objective, where's my character coming from? Where's my character going? Where do, what do they want? Uh, what are the obstacles in my character's way? Um, you know, is it summer or winter? Is, you know, it's so, or this, is, this is the groundwork, all the work that you do at home, or you know, hopefully with a, a friend or a scene partner or whatever, then in performance, you can throw it all out. Yeah. It's already, it's all there, but it's doing that work. It's the night before rather than going, oh, I'll just, I'll see how it goes. It's like, no, if you haven't read it, read the dance. You're going to know what story you're a part of. Um, you have to start making really definitive choices. That yes, the casting director may say, okay, let's, that, that's one way, but we're going to go completely in the other direction. That's when you can adjust, but you go in there with a certain choice. You go in there with absolute choices rather than going in there and going, okay, I know my lines. Now, what should I do? Yeah, um, I'm just going to wing it. Go in there and tell the story. My number one advice. Uh, and I only say this because it was so, uh, meaningful to me is um if if you are getting out there uh, as as a, a new act or whatever get work as a reader do whatever you can um get your representation to call call yourself casting agents do you need a reader for this project it's the most informative way to get into the audition room and watch other people audition 
to really, you see some actors, really established actors come in, they're so nervous or, um, or you know, you, you can tell when an actor comes in and they just nail it. You can tell someone who comes in and just owns their space and you realize that the casting director is so on your side. Right. Because frankly, you not only are you there to get the job, but you're also there to make the casting director look really good. That's their job. They're, they they get great people on tape or or if you're there, you know, uh, trying to get a theater role for the director, they are on your side from the very beginning. So it was remarkable for me to sit in there beside a director or beside casting, reading off people, some people nervous, some people not, some people had done the homework, some people hadn't. And you could just see... Uh, how an audition works and mm -hmm. it took I wouldn't say it totally took the terror away but it took so much of that terror and mystique away from from you know you're, you're going into a really warm room if you're an actor that steps into casting they're on your side all you got to do now is bring your homework and bring it and if you can have fun in the process that's you know that's that's when that's when the room lights up that's amazing uh, and I actually know that too, because I started off as a theater major and a theater actor and I moved to New York. And right. when I moved there, someone suggested to me, cause I needed a full, I needed a job. I needed to, you know, have money coming in. And someone said, Oh, go work for an agent or a casting agent or a director or something. And then you can, you know, maybe that'll help you out. I was like, Oh, that's just, it was brilliant. And I ended yeah. up working in a casting office, um, and learned so much. And it's exactly like you said, you, you, it takes the fear out of it. It makes you feel comfortable. You can walk in knowing that they are on your side and they want you to do well because that makes them look good. You know, that they yep. brought in talented people, you know, who, who, can, who can read the, you know, who can, you know, bring life to the character. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it's invaluable. And as, as a casting director, um, I do uh, from time to time have readers you know, come in and even seasoned actors who have been doing it for a long time will be like, wow, I really learned something today. You know, there's right. really something to take away from it, even if you've been acting for a while in front of the camera. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's such great advice. Um, yeah. So and now, so I'll ask you, so you have, uh, as I mentioned, you've, you've had your own shows, like it's your show, you're the lead character you know, it, it, not just a part of an ensemble cast, right? Like where it's, it's your show, right? Satisfaction, yes, no, uh, yeah. So I, I think um, I've certainly been in many shows where you were very much part of the ensemble. I have done a couple of shows where uh, it's sort of based around your character, you know, um, and a lot of the show rests on your shoulders. Never more so in those roles do you realize how, what an ensemble it you know it actually is um i've done a show where i was in every scene talked through every scene all that kind of stuff um you're so reliant on the entire all of the cogs moving you become best friends with your sound guys you become best friends with your camera guys as a cast um you know if if you're lucky enough and i've been just touch wood so amazingly lucky to have the casts I uh, have been able to work with um, that it's it, from, 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 the, from the background actors that are in like the cop shop every day to the guest actors flying in from Los Angeles, the whole thing needs every one of those wheels to turn. Um, I don't think there's much diva activity that goes on in acting today. I don't, it's just not even... And also those kind of stories get blown up out of proportion anyway, but never more so do you understand just what an ensemble thing it is. And my, my early days in theater and always my love of theater, I think, and also being in the army in that sort of band of brothers atmosphere, always, I've always been really attracted to that ensemble mm -hmm. piece. It is never a solo effort mm -hmm. um, on any show and anything you're doing. Mm -hmm. I, uh, if I think as an actor, if ever you feel like you're just in your own bubble, you got to burst it. I don't know how, you know, whatever you got to do to burst that, start talking to your sound guys, start talking to your camera guys, start talking to your DP, start 
you know, welcoming the guest actors as they come onto the set, find out their stories. But whatever you got to do to get out of any kind of self, self bubble, you got to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's never fun in your own bubble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's say so. You've been series regular on uh, many shows. You've you know been done leads in feature films. Um, and having talking about the the audition process, you still go through the audition process like that really never ends and uh, auditioning really is a lot of the job the pre-job to the job right absolutely i think i think an actor should gird their loins to to audition their entire lives now if your career gets in some certain point for a while because remember nothing's consistent in this in this crazy uh, uh occupation of ours um, that there may be a certain time when offers are coming in or, you know, you're going to meetings with the studio and you can tell they love you. I've been into, I've been in a meeting and they said, listen, we just want to say, we see a billboard, Matt Passmore and the network name over there. Wow. Those are gifts. Those wow. are wonderful. But I have made sure that I've said to my reps in my own mind, I know it. I will never lose a job because I wouldn't go in the room. Now there, there may be some kind of strategic thing that you between your manager and your agent or whatever, there may be some job where they say, well, we don't, you know, we want, we want them to come a little bit to you for this one or whatever. My guys are always kind of hold me back. Cause I'm like, get me in the room. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Get me in the room. I'm, uh, I, I don't mind that at all. Going back to um, one of the most informative moments from my life as an actor was back to early on just out of NIDA and, I heard someone say about the, uh, the reading thing. And so I did uh, an amazing director, Shereen Nolan, and we were, um, I was reading for this film that she was casting, this older, incredibly established Australian actor walked in and he walked in and kind of sat down and said, listen, I don't mind talking about this whole project with you. You guys have all my work. I mean, 40 years of my work. You've got, to, you've got to know whether you want me or not. Come on, you know, this kind of thing. They had a great talk about the project and everything. And uh, I remember him walking out and I remember the director going, oh, oh, he would have been great for it. But you've got to remember, directors are answerable to other people, to producers, to finance, you know, financiers, all that kind of stuff. And she's like, I can't. For this project, I can't cast anyone that doesn't put themselves on tape. That's just what has to happen here. And wow. this, I can't tell you how established this guy is in Australia. Wow. He, he walked out of that role. And I, I remember then and there as like this young, hungry kid going, okay, that's never going to happen. Not I ever. I love it. Yeah. You don't know where your lessons are coming from, right? Or what's going to, yeah. what you're going to, where you're going to take something away that's going to change the trajectory or the, your mindset or... Yeah, oh, and it doesn't matter on, in the realm of right or wrong, whether he was right or wrong. For that project, a director said, I'm going to, just for this one, I need you on tape. Yeah. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't take that direction. Didn't wow. want to do it. Wow. And so that was like, uh, I think if you can keep your humble pants on for your <laughs> yeah. entire career, I think the, the second that you feel yourself starting to drink your own Kool-Aid, you have become an obstacle to yourself. That's not to mean that you don't know your own worth especially if they're negotiating on your behalf, all that kind of stuff. But when you, and you, you'll know as an actor, when you start to think, hang on, I'm entitled to, mm -hmm. you know, I don't have to go that extra mile or because I don't want to, because, you know, you know, if it's starting to prick your ego or your career or whatever, and I shouldn't say we all, I know, I have now become my number one obstacle to getting what I truly want, which is the work. Right which is to tell a great story. Yeah. That's going to do it for today. Thank you so much. Matt Passmore, you were incredible. We so appreciate your time and your insight. It just, it just means everything to us. Um, guys, if you haven't already done so, subscribe below, hit the bell, hit the likes, make, post a comment. We'd love to hear your feedback. We'd love to know what you like, what you want to see more of, any questions you might have. So don't be shy. We want to get to know you. In the meantime, you guys, we'll see you later. Come back, check us out next week.